If you look at that thing very well, you know, I think the guy was alleged to be saying, huh? uh, first I said that my father will help to write a letter or whatever, but you know Nigeria being very corrupt, we may need 10 million naira. He didn't say he was going to give me 10 million naira. In the so-called private discussion with somebody, it was somebody else who now decided to interpret the recording by now saying, oh, I'm disappointed that Falano can take 10 million naira to uh, write a letter of pardon. Oh, I used to have respect for him. You know, so it was totally uncalled for. And if you now say you, I'm your uncle, as we are being told now, why do you do not put a court through? This is the allegation flying around. Is it true? The only disturbing area in this scenario is the threat to me and one of my two daughters. Some of these guys who I believe are mentally deranged dared me if you like if you go to court we shall burn your office they have also sent messages to my one of my daughters that if your father goes to court we shall kill you I beg your father in this country <laughs> I just laugh and I ask my girl don't worry I will take it up I've already I've already taken that up but we must also let these guys know where we are coming from. We fought against some of the most murderous military regimes in Africa. Well, um, I have uh, tried as much as possible not to embark on any action that could be misunderstood when allegations are made against my person I try to respond without losing my temper uh, in this particular instance I was provoked highly provoked but I can always control my emotion. Um, members of my immediate family and extended family were a bit worried. Because for them, you don't deserve this, but they know what I do. But I explain to them, I assure you, at the end of the day, I will not disappoint you. Because, in fact, I think I was telling my wife that all these allegations are in the words of Shakespeare. <laughs> A tale told by an idiot, full of sand and fury, signifying nothing. As a policy, as a policy, we do not collect fees to write letters for pardon. It's not part of our system because we do not profit from the misfortune of other people or the tragedy of people. No. And it doesn't it doesn't cost us anything. Once we identify a case of mistrial, a case of injustice, or a case of subversion of the judicial system, we intervene. We do our homework, carry out our research, and write letters. 
in the last 42 years of my legal practice, I have never ever demanded for a cover to write a letter of pardon for anybody. And my work in this area is not limited to Nigeria. So we have never ever collected a dime on cover from all the beneficiaries of the pardon that we apply for. Now let me so, ask you uh, uh, for that reason the allegation is totally uncalled for. Totally uncalled for. Totally unwarranted. How about the allegation that your son falls is standing as a front for you? Sir? How do you respond to that? Well you know These guys don't know me. They also don't know my son, even though it's of their generation. He stands out for principle. He stands out for decency. And will never go out of his way to front for me. The guy doesn't want anybody to know that it's my son. When he started his music career, he was with us in practice. He left the abandoned practice, legal practice. He was doing fantastically well. So he said, Dad, <laughs> I'm no longer going to practice law. I'm going to entertainment world. When he started, he was invited, I think, by the NTA for an interview. Right? And he was introduced as Fulani Fals. So when he came back home, he was still living with us then. His mother asked him, Why are you going about calling yourself Fulani Fals? He said, what, what should I call myself? Fulani Falana. So that the name can open doors for you. He said, Mom, I don't want anybody's name to open doors for me. I want to open my own doors. Because if I had said I was Fulani Falana, and that interview was granted, I might have felt maybe it was because of my father's name. No. Mom, the day I will be happy is when they ask you, are you fast, Mom? And when they ask my father, are you fast dad? So he has never gone out of his way. You can check from his friends to introduce himself as Falano's son. One day, I was, I was at the Abuja airport waiting for my flight. And some young girls came to me. Sister, is it true you are fast dad? I smiled. So I think so. <laughs> so wow. They embraced me. So when I got to my corner, young man, today, some young guys besieged me in Abuja and asked whether, he said, what did they have? They said, are you fast father? He was happy. He said, that is what I want. And called the mother to hear my story. So he will not go out of his way. And, you know, it's a bit painful because last year, he went for a surgery in the UK. I think, uh, you know, he plays football. So he had uh, a knee injury. So the operation was successful. His mother and I were coming home from Cuba. So uh, we decided to check him uh, in the United Kingdom, travel via London. And so we saw the young man said, so please, as a contribution, you no, know, like I said, you know, we congratulated him, you know, the operation was successful. Can we pick up the bill? He said, no, dad, no, mom. I pay my bill before I come here. So I, I, I hope I'm not being rude. He said, no, we're happy. I told, I told him. 
Then I told my wife, your son is telling you that he's richer than you. He said, no, no, that's not what I'm saying. But I just, you know, I mean, if I needed financial assistance, I would have told you, but I, I don't need it. So he's not the kind of person that will call anybody. And in any case, he and his siblings, his two sisters, regularly refer victims of injustice victims of human rights abuse to us without any condition attached and just recently <laughs> i was telling him in particular you know come you and your sisters you know you just send people to us the way you are going very soon we'll be sending you our bill <laughs> so we just laugh over it so it can never because he knows it is not our practice to take money for pardon. So he couldn't have been talking about money. If you look at that thing very well, you know, I think the guy was elected to be seen. Huh? Uh, first, I said that my father will help to write a letter or whatever. But you know, Nigeria being very corrupt, we may need 10 million. Naira. He didn't say he was going to give me 10 million. Naira. In the so called private discussion with somebody, it was. Somebody else who now decided to interpret the recording by now saying, Oh, I'm disappointed that Falano can take 10 million naira to uh, write a letter of pardon. Oh, I used to have respect for him. You know, so it was totally uncalled for. And if you now say, I'm your uncle, as we are being told now, why did you not put a court through? This is the allegation flying around. Is it true? That you were going to, or that you had collected, because they say I had collected 10 million naira to write a letter of pardon for a convict. Again, as I said, it is not part of our practice. Let me get your perspective on things. You've mentioned that you will pursue civil proceedings instead of criminal charges against a very dark man. Uh, why did you choose this route? And, uh, I'm sure you have also explored the Cybercrime Law Act in order to uh, file charges against him. Why have you decided to pursue a civil process in Frankly state? speaking, many people, including senior lawyers, suggested that I should file a criminal complaint. So, in February this year, the National Assembly amended the Cybercrimes Act and removed all those provisions that relate to libel or defamation. So today, a person can only be prosecuted under that law if he uses a computer to send pornographic materials or statements that are capable to cause a breach of the peace in the society. So it has nothing to do with protecting any individual. That is the state of the law today. So I couldn't have filed a petition under the Cyber Crimes Act. Because right now, I'm defending two journalists who were child, no, who are standing trial for cyber stalking or whatever. And we have raised serious objections. In one of them, the court had agreed, yes. The law has been amended, but this law was this offense was committed when the law was still valid. We are proceeding to the court of appeal. But I mean, on a more serious note, the campaign we are leading for decriminalization has hidden fruits in Liberia, in Sierra Leone, and Ghana. Those countries, the parliaments in those countries, have put together all anti-democratic legislation, anti-press laws, all anti-press criminal laws, and repeal them. So you now have to go to court to sue for libel or slander. Now, Lagos and Edo State have also repealed criminal libel. So, from the statute book, only those two states in Nigeria. So, we're trying to 
we gave these laws and we're trying to appeal to other state governments to wipe out criminal life from their criminal courts. So this is the state of the for that reason. It's not that there are no other criminal offenses. For instance, injurious falsehood, false information. You know, if you give false information to some about somebody to the outside world or to the members of the public, we cannot get complain. The only disturbing area in this scenario is the threat to me and one of my two daughters. Some of these guys who I believe are mentally deranged are dared me. If you like, if you go to court, we shall burn your office. They have also sent messages to my one of my daughters that if your father goes to court, we shall kill you. I beg your father in this country. <laughs> I just laughed and I asked my girl, "Don't worry, I will take it up." I've already, I've already taken that up. But we must also let these guys know where we are coming from. We fought against some of the most murderous. Military regimes in Africa. The fact that I'm alive today is Sherlock. 